we give you all the glory. Father, we come to you this morning to praise you, 
We come to you this morning to worship you. We come to you this morning to adore you. We come to you this morning to lift your name on high. For Father, you deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. You deserve the praise. Father, we pray that even as we worship you this morning, that you will cleanse our hearts of all sin and unrighteousness. That our worship to you this morning, Lord, will be acceptable to you. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Yes, Revelations chapter 4 verse 8 tells us that holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And so brothers and sisters, we are gathered this morning to praise and worship the Holy God. And as we start, we shall sing that timeless song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Chapter 6, verse 3. 
And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. In 1 Samuel 2.2, there is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Hebrews 12.14, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Friends, let us take a posture of prayer, even as we have heard that we need to cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. And there is no better way to bring about the cleansing of sin than to repent truly to God. May we bring our repentance to God. In the last week, many of us none righteous, that there is none who seeks after God, because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. I don't know in what ways you have failed, but let us speak to our God, because he is uh, the only judge and just judge who can forgive us of our sins. Let us confess them to him. Let us boldly approach his throne and seek for his pardon. And jointly using that prayer of general confession. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned in our thoughts, in our words, in what we have done, and in what we have failed to do. We are like lost sheep, unable to help ourselves. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive those who confess their faults, as you promised in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, may he have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. May he confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as forgiven sinners, may we pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily food. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, today is uh, the Trinity Sunday. The Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons in one God, now and forevermore. Let us praise God for his mercy. O oh Lord, open our lips. Indeed, our mouth, our lips, our legs, our bodies will celebrate the Lord, and so let us arise and celebrate, celebrate him as the mustard seed choir leads us. 
praise the Lord, church. Praise King Jesus. Just wave to your neighbor. Make them feel welcome in this service. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand of praise to him. Every praise is to 
lift ourselves unto you, Lord. We lift all our burdens unto you, Jesus, because you invite us with open arms, Lord. And Father, we do not take the grace that you have granted us, Lord Jesus, for granted, Lord. Father, we do not take the love that you have given unto us for granted. We do not take your mercies for granted, Lord. And that's why we declare and sing out, Lord, that we are covered today, that we are covered with your love, that we are covered with your grace and mercy, Lord. When your son died on that cross, Lord, you took everything upon yourself, Lord. Every sin, Lord, every tragedy, Lord, every burden that we had, Father, you took it upon yourself and it died on that cross with you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. We thank you for who you are, Lord. Let's sing grace. Grace, glorious grace. Grace, glorious grace. At the cross, you call it finished. Grace, wonderful grace. Grace, wonderful grace. At the cross, all of my sin is covered.
ourselves when we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of a new day. We defend us, defend us we pray, against your harm. Elect our thoughts, speech, and actions. Help us to serve you faithfully, that in our work and worship, we may always praise you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pamoja na hayo Mungu wetu na baba yetu ketie mahali pa juu palipo inuka. Baba tunakurudishia utukufu na neema hii kwa sababu wewe ndiwe Mungu. Zaidi yako hakuna Mungu mwingine ambaye tunaweza tukamwendea na kumweleza mahitaji yetu. Ila ni wewe Mungu uliye mtakatifu 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 tena Bwana wa majeshi. Mbingu na nchi baba zimejaa utukufu wako. Sisi watoto wako umetupa neema ya kukusanyika hapa katika asubuhi ya leo. Asante kwa ajili ya mama huyo. Asante kwa ajili ya baba huyo. Asante kwa ajili ya mtoto huyo na kijana huyo ambaye kwa neema yako Kristo umemleta hapa ili akutukuze na ukusifu wewe. Asante kwa ajili ya injiri ambayo Mungu inahubiriwa katika ulimwengu wote. Tukianza hapa Uganda, Afrika Mashariki, Afrika nzima pamoja na dunia yote kwa ujumla. Mungu tunashukuru sana kwa sababu umetupa neema hii ya kukutangaza wewe ili mataifa yote waone ukuu wako na nguvu yako. Mungu tunaombea nchi yetu ya Uganda Baba wa mbinguni wabariki watoto wako wote katika nchi hii. Tukimuinua mtumishi wako rais wa nchi hii pamoja na viongozi wote wa serikali endelea kuwatunza na kuwalinda. Mungu tunainua chuo chetu hiki. Uganda Christian University tunakiweka mikononi mwako e Bwana. Tunaomba utunze viongozi wote. Kiongozi mkuu wa chuo hiki pamoja na walimu wote, wafanyakazi wote wanafunzi wote na wale ambao sio wafanyakazi wote kwa pamoja Mungu walinde kwa neema yako lakini tunakumbuka siku ya kesho um, kuwa kanisa ngirikana katika uh, nchi hii baba askofu mkuu atakuwepo hapa katika chuo chetu tunamweka mikononi mwako e bwana tunaomba mtunze umrinde katika safari yake atakapokuwepo hapa Aone baraka za kwako, aone nguvu ya kwako, lakini pia afanyike baraka kwa chuo hiki na kwa watu wako wote. Tunaombea utume katika wiki ili ambayo utume unaanza. Wiki ili Mungu tunaliweka kwako ili kazi yako ya kubiri njiri katika maeneo haya na maeneo mengine ikazae matunda ili watu wako wakusifu na ukutukuza wewe kwani ndiwe Mungu na zaidi yako hakuna Mungu mwingine. Tunaombea wagonjwa wote katika maeneo haya na kwingine kote. Yesu watunze, Yesu walinde, wajarie nguvu, uzima na afya njema. Tunakushukuru Mungu wa mbinguni kwa sababu umesikia haya na yale ambayo Mungu hatukuyaleta lakini babu anayafahamu. Tunaomba uyapokee kwako na kuyapa kibali. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And friends, even as we are still in that same posture of prayer, we have all come here with a prayer burden. And so we want to take this opportunity to mention those personal needs to the Lord. In our own words, let us mention those needs to the Lord. Let us mention that which has disturbed us throughout the week, that burden that we have kept on carrying throughout the week. It could be a personal burden. It could be a, pers a family burden. It could be something that you are faced with at your place of work. It could be an illness that has disturbed you for some time. Let us bring it to the Lord. Because he's here to answer prayers. He's here to set the captives free. So let us come to him in prayer. Knowing that when we pray, he hears us and he answers us. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. 
Oh Lord God, you have promised that when two or three have met in your name, you will grant their requests. Answer now, O oh Lord, the desires and requests of your servants, as may be best for us. Grant us knowledge of your truth and a gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us appreciate our choir even as they take their seats. But before they take their seats, I'm going to request them to give us a very good number as we welcome the smartest, well-dressed, most well-dressed people in this house, the young children. So as they come up, give us a good, good number of Jesus so that they can come celebrating. The young people, please come up. This is our time now. And as they come, I'm going to request the Reverend Henry to come and bless the children. and pray hands together and eyes closed let's pray i ask the parents uh, all of us raise our hands towards these children father we thank you for the gift of children we thank king of kings for the ministry in Thorncraft chapel towards children lord we pray that you bless them even as they go for their church we pray for the teachers we pray for the different age, age groups even as they discuss and uh, learn about you Lord, you help each one of them to understand. But above all, help us as parents to nurture them in ways that bring glory to your holy name. We give you glory and your honor. We come against every sickness, every darkness, every works of the enemy towards our children. We render them powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, you shall bless them even as they grow through Jesus Christ. I will be praying. Amen. Thank you. Mugende, Mugende, Ino Yesa Wayamwe, Mukungane, Sunday School Yona, Abato Mugende. I'm going to request us to stand up and they are going to give us that song which they have been giving us. Then I'm going to tell you what to do. Let us stand up, uh huh. As we celebrate, uh huh.
sing that song of Atomuje. Some people think they are not young. But the word of God tells us that a thousand ages in the Lord's sight are just like an evening song. And the Bishop of Betia in the Lord's sight has not even made 10 minutes. <laughs> He's still working hard to make 10 minutes. So for all of us, Abatu, not so. Praise the Lord. Let us sit down and hear the word of the Lord. the word of the God, hear the word of the Lord, gospel, according to St. Matthew, chapter 12, chapter, chapter 11, beginning at verse 20, gospel, according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, beginning at verse 20. Then Jesus began to denounce the city in which most of his miracles has performed, has been performed, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Crozan, woe to you, Bethsaida, if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in time and stone, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for time done on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depth. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these the things from the wise and learned and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows my Father. No one knows my, the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And to those, to those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burned, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest here from your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, there is a quote uh, here that I am seeing about burdens. And uh, we have just read about burdens. But somebody has said that real life begins when the burden of life is too much to bear. I don't know whether your real life has begun and there is a burden that is too much for you to bear. But we shall arise and we sing that hymn, Burdens are lifted at Calvary.
we thank you so much for being so close to us. Dear Jesus, thank you for honoring us with your presence this morning. We lift our burdens to you, the burden lifter. So be glorified as we focus on you and worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we have prayed with thanksgiving and everyone says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Please, before you enjoy your seat, just turn to two people on the left and right and smile. Even though you're putting on a mask, we can see that smile. The eyes never tell a lie. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are welcome. I want to believe your neighbor is very, very fine in the presence of the Lord. There is a word that we love to use in the company of young people, and I want to share it with you. Chillax. Turn to your neighbor and say, she lax. And I learned that <laughs> new words are added to the dictionary every year. So I wanted to find out if that word actually is there. And friends, it's there. So Bishop, my academic mentor, Bishop Opedia, <laughs> Bishop Joel, chillax. <laughs> and do you know what it means? Calm down and rest. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. So turn to your neighbor and say, chillax, Jesus is here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, let's clap to the Lord. He is here with us. <laughs> it is such a joy for us to be together in the presence of our Father, where burdens are lifted. So in a special way, we want to thank our choir, Mustard Seed, Thank you for the great job. God bless you. And if you're seated there and you know that God has gifted you in such a way, please come and join the team and let's worship the Lord and lead us in worship before our Father. Jesus is here. Do you believe that? Jesus is here. Come on, let's make some joyful noise. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Do not walk away with those burdens. Hallelujah. Great. There are special people in our midst. You celebrated your birthday, anniversary. We want to celebrate with you. You are dear, and we thank God that you did. So just put up your hand so we can celebrate with you. Wow, great, great. Just put up. Wonderful, great, great. Thank you. Just stand up so that we can shower you with the love. Yes, in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. May the good Lord. Hallelujah. To Jesus. May God's Holy Spirit remain over. Hallelujah. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. And I learned in the morning because I thought it was. 22 years of an wedding anniversary, I learned that your chaplain, our chaplain, made 22 years of being introduced before Tama's wonderful family. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you, chaplain. There is like a cool picture that is, you know, very viral on social media. Have you seen that cool picture? Speak to me nicely. I'll share it with you. Hallelujah. And you will know chaplain is Jem Vude. You know, we come from far, by the way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, if this is your first time to fellowship with us, we love you. We want to welcome you. Just put up your hand so that we can welcome you. First time visitors, your very first time. Wow, welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us. Turn to your neighbor, especially those who are seated next to empty seats. Tell them, come with a visitor next Sunday. I will check as you come in. Praise the, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. Dear friends, yes, the Trinity Semester Mission Week starts today, 12th of June, 2022. And we are privileged this morning to have a great man of God launch us of this day. Hallelujah. And so we invite all of you to participate. Please turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I invite you to take part in the missions week. Hey, hey, you invite someone and don't show up. 
You will have to repent in sackcloth. Great. We shall be so happy to see you join in as we preach the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. To let you know, yes, we are starting off today. Tomorrow we shall be having a service in the evening. But before that, we are going to be moving in different, to different offices, lecture rooms, halls of residences, hostels. We are bringing Jesus close to you because Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. And in the evening, we shall crown it up with an evening session, 5.30 p.m. So please come tomorrow, Monday, with a friend, 5.30 p.m. And on Tuesday, tell your friend, Tuesday. Yes, our chancellor, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, will be here. Please tell your friend again. The chancellor will be here with us. Hallelujah. During community worship, and he will bring the word of God to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Please, again, let's flood this place with very many young people. Invite all your friends. Let all offices close and let all the young people come and let's enjoy ourselves in the presence of God as our papa, his grace, brings God's word to us. Praise the Lord. For everyone who has registered and you who is planning to register after this service, we want to let you know that we'll be having a meeting tomorrow morning at exactly 9 a.m. in our chapel. Those who have registered to take part and those who are intending to do so, please come tomorrow at 9 a.m. And then we shall be commissioned. Praise the Lord. Do we have fathers in the house? Mm. Do we have mothers and women in the house? <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Do we have fathers in the presence of the Lord? Yes. Praise the Lord, fathers. <laughs> My goodness, why are you testing me? I don't want to call upon the mothers because they will pull this, you know, roof down. Praise the Lord, mother. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, fathers. Wow, great. Now, the fathers here and potential fathers. Fathers Union will be celebrating Peter's Day on 3rd July. So why are we telling you that? Because we want all the fathers here to participate. I'll be so happy to see Bishop Joel in the choir. <laughs> Bishop is warning me and say, Lydia, you wait, watch the space, I will do so. So to all the fathers, please come to the office, meet the chaplain, and all the assistants will be there to guide you, to help you, so that you can participate in this special day. So fathers, this is your day. Come, invite all the men, all the fathers, and potential fathers. Let us, you know, enjoy the presence of the Lord. Worship Jesus as you lead us in his presence. Praise the Lord. Just to share with you how, by the grace of God, we were able to give on Sunday, 29th May, 2022, offertory was 1,089,000. Tithe was 1,442,500. And tithe to the office was 280,000. Thanksgiving was 50,000. Kampala campus giving was 47,800. Sunday school was 82,600. Fast fruit, 50,000. Foreign currency, Tanzanian shillings, 1,000. And Kenyan shillings, 20. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's clap to the Lord and thank the Lord for the giving. By the way, you know that we can even do better than this. Just tell your neighbor we can do better. Hallelujah. The Lord loves your cheerful giver. Praise the name of the Lord. Bands of marriage, friends. The second time of announcement, bands of marriage between Conrad Mutiti, a son of Dr. and Mrs. Mutiti Alfred of Belisa Chigwere, and Shiba Atkunda, daughter of Reverend and Mrs. Mukundane Charles of Kishasha Mbarara City. Are you present? Just stand up so we can pray with you. Shiba, Conrad, wow, there they are. Great. You know, we are so excited because Shiba is always up here in the worship team. Please let's stretch our hands towards them 
and let's pray for them. Father God, we thank you so much for Conrad and Sheba, who are intending to walk down the aisle. We bring them to you, dear Lord, that you may go before them. Surround them with the right friends, so that they can indeed get the right counsel that comes from you. We pray, dear Lord, that as you prepare them, they will take to heart the message you sent to them through the different counselors, and they will put it into practice. Please go before them. We pray for perfect health. We pray that there, there will be a success, and that, Lord, their marriage will be a success to the glory of your name. Take over, provide for them, receive all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, amen. amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, we are privileged to have special people in our midst. Uh, they are elders in our midst. They are part of us and mentored many of us. And they are teachers. They are really good role models to us. Please allow me to start by welcoming a dear friend. Yes, the president of the presidents in the Church of Uganda Mothers Union. And that's none other than Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi. Beautiful lady there. She came with the lover of her life. She came to support him. And the preacher this morning is none other than Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi. We welcome you. We are so happy to have you this morning. But before they come, we are going to give and give generously. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God loves a cheerful giver. Choir, we welcome you as you lead us in this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's rise and join, and join in this song, uh, declaring that our burdens are lifted at, Calv at Calvary and that our Lord Jesus paid the price when he died and rose again. Hallelujah. Shrela Calvary Jump. 
Well, it's a joy for us to be back here at UCU and to bring God's word to you. And since distance-wise, I'm already observing the soaps. I'm going to try and show you my mouth so that you don't think today we had a mouthless preacher. Okay, please allow me to take off these things and we pray that the Lord will deliver us from them. I'm quite certain there will be none in heaven. Some of these things make you homesick, don't they, Bishop? They really make you homesick. And you say, I want to go to the place where I won't need to wear them. So thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Chaplain C, uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to come and share God's word today. And so I look forward to a wonderful time. You know, uh, when Reverend Lydia asked the fathers, I put up my hand, but I missed something else. Where are the grandfathers in this house? <laughs> I want to see the grandfathers. Put up your hands. Yes. Uh, there, is a, there is someone, an underage grandfather there. He's really underage. Huh? Uh, an underage grandfather. But uh, some of us grandfathers, I think we just need to find our own day. Uh, so that uh, they, we are also celebrated, grandfathers and grandmothers. I should have said grandmothers as well. Where are they? Yes, they are grandmothers in this place. <clears throat> what a wonder it is. Uh, God has blessed us with four wonderful children whom we love dearly. All of them adult and out of the house. So essentially we are back to our honeymoon. And uh, six grandchildren and counting. So you can imagine what a joy. And I can tell you, for those of you who are parents, you haven't known the joy of children yet. My sister Pamela. Uh, uh, not yet, not yet, not yet. When you come to grandchildren, then you just become crazy. It's just something else. But what a joy it is. And uh, I was also feeling a certain sense that uh, those people whose birthday was this last week, uh, we cheat them. It's the cheapest birthday celebration that they get. Fortunately, they get, it, they get blessings from the Lord. Uh, so that compensates. But, you know, they just say, hey, your birthday, you know, we are celebrating it. Uh, that's wonderful. Okay, I'm going now to turn to God's word. My name is John, and uh, I came with Ruth, and I'm going to ask her to come over, please. And uh, I'll ask her to say a word to greet you, and then also pray for me, and pray for this time as we turn to God's word. Um, You already heard that she is the president, the provincial president of Mother's Union. Now, what do you call the wife of a president? <laughs> huh? What is Mrs. Museveni called? What title is she given? Huh? Uh -uh, she's not Her Excellency, by the way. Uh -uh. Maybe in Congo. Maybe in DRC, a first lady, that's what they call her. So what do you think I am? <laughs> first gentleman, right? <laughs> first gentleman. So let me ask her uh, to greet you and then say a word. Don't worry about the fact that I'm passing on this microphone. Dr. Mlindwa, you'll forgive me. But uh, if I was to get that terrible disease, I probably would have already got it from her. Praise the Lord. So good to see you uh, all. We thank God for life. We thank God that uh, we have great memories of UCU. We lived here for 20 years, a little over 20 years, and brought up our children here. Matthew came when he was four, our last born, and now he's 26, independent somewhere in Germany. 
Isn't that amazing? Yes. yes. So God, um, God has kept us very well, and we're happy. Thank you so much, Chaplaincy, for having us back. Uh, let us pray. Father, I just want to thank you so much for John this morning as he delivers your word. I place him into your hands, Lord, that he will speak words that come from you. Silence every other voice, Lord, that he may be able to speak. Father, thank you for our hearts and our ears. We pray that you open them up, that we may be able to hear that which you have brought us today, and that we may be able to put it into action, that we may follow you faithfully and as we hear your word. All this I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we did read a text that came out of Matthew chapter 11. Let me ask you to look there as we open God's word. You know, in our life, and we often talk about it with my wife, we've had people preach a sermon of even an hour without ever opening the Bible. And uh, I do not believe in that. I always prefer to preach out of the text, out of God's word. And so, uh, please do turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. And we read from verse 20 to the end. And uh, the topic that I was given, which is the theme for this week, is Jesus, the one who lifts our burdens. Jesus, the one who lifts our burdens. But I must say that if I were to change that topic, I would have called it another opportunity, as you'll soon get to hear. I could have just titled it or given it a topic, another opportunity coming out of that text. So we're going to talk about burdens. And the reality is, each of us does face burdens sometimes, isn't it? Burdens never cease. If you have never seen burdens, then probably you're, li you're living in a different world. Some of us actually have the burden of thinking about tomorrow, the future. And God is amazing because he didn't show us what's going to happen to you tomorrow. Not even what will happen in the next hour. So some of us live in fear of the future. In fear of the future. And burdens our hearts. And I know that speaking in a context like this, I'm sure there are students who are probably burdened with the thought, will I be able to complete my fees? Yeah? Will I be able to complete my fees? Or even, even if I complete my fees, others may not be concerned about fees, but they are concerned whether they will get the right class of that degree. They want a first class, but will they get the first class? So all of us face some, some kind of anxiety about something. It can be sicknesses, people lose sleep due to the burdens in their hearts. Sometimes it's failed relationships. Failed relationships. That also happens. And you know when you complete your university and you graduate, I attended very many graduations in this university, <clears throat> and you can see the students, the graduates now, rejoicing. Rejoicing. And so when they rejoice and celebrate, it's like they have taken off one burden of education, but then all of a sudden they are loaded down with joblessness. Isn't it? That also happens. All of a sudden now they are looking into this world and they don't know where they will get the job. <clears throat> the last two, two years of our time here, it was actually a bit less than two years. We had the struggle of COVID, and now we are hearing that there's a COVID-19 resurgence that's coming back. That's why you have to put on all these masks. Can I have my water, please, over there? <clears throat> 
So the question that I want to start with is, what is your burden? What is your burden? What is it that's weighing you down? That you start thinking to yourself, I have no peace. I am anxious. Thank you. That you have no peace. And you're restless. And you're weary. So as we talk about Jesus, the one who lifts our burdens, I want, to think ser I want you to think seriously. What is it in your heart? It can be troubles. It can be needs. Things that you're looking at and you're saying to yourself, I wish I had this. But I'm now troubled. Maybe your parents are sick. Maybe you're orphaned. And in your family... They are looking at you, they are educating you, and they are waiting for you to get a job so that they can come and feel a little bit more comfortable. So there are all sorts of burdens that we face. And the funny thing with many of these burdens is that the world only sedates us. Sedates us. You know what I say? Sedating is. Doctors do it. They give you a little bit of sedative, sedatives so that you can sleep or whatever, like chloroform. But eventually you wake up. Do you hear that? You wake up. So there are people who depend so much on sedatives of life to take care of the burden in their hearts. That's what the world offers. You know, have you seen people sighing? <sighs> but they're not, they're not sighing with a leaf. They're sighing because they're weighed down in their hearts. Some people turn to drugs. And they believe that if they can only take the drugs, at least they will feel a certain kind of rest within their hearts. Others go to alcohol and they drink and drink. But you know when you drink the night before and you wake up in the morning, is the problem gone? Of course not. The next morning what happens? You still have the problem but in addition you have a hangover. Right? Some use pleasure. And when they feel weighed down in their hearts, they say, let's watch a movie so that we can put a smile on the face. But the smile is not as deep as the heart. You know that happens too. Young people turn to sex. And they think that if they can have sex, then they have the pleasure and then they will be happier. But it backfires. And you know, it's very funny with the sin. Sin never tells you the consequences. It only tells you the pleasure you'll have as you do it. That's what sin does. And so, you go for sex. Illicit sex. Premarital or even extramarital. And sin is promising you pleasure. But at the end of it, you start wondering, why did I do it? Have you heard of situations where people have premarital sex and the other person is thinking that they will get married after that? You know, especially you ladies, you have a tendency of thinking, if we have sex, he will marry me. We come across that kind of stupidity. But you know, you have sex with this person and after that he says, well, there's nothing more to discover about you. I have emptied you. You are now so empty, there's nothing for me now to know. So they, they set you off. They let you go. So what is it 
any kind of pleasure that you use to kind of sedate yourself from the heavy burden that's on your heart. What is it? That's what we are talking about today. We want to understand where shall we turn, where shall we go from this disquiet, this discomfort that we feel in our hearts. Some people turn to religion. So you may have come here this morning to church thinking if I can only go to church then all will be well. I will feel happier. And so they think that religion somehow will quieten the troubles of the heart, the burden, will lift the burden. But after they finish church, you ask them, well, now, how is it? Oh, it was a good sermon. But actually, they've not changed. Nothing has changed in their situation. Burdens, burdens. No wonder many missions, like talking about this text, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Because burdens never cease. All of us go through some kind of burdens of one, one sort or the other. Some people even turn to daily doses of a drug. Even if it is a prescribed drug, just to get some sleep. And some have committed suicide that way. You remember Robin Williams? The man who, who made all of us laugh. He made everyone laugh. The only person he could not make laugh is himself. And eventually he was found dead. You remember Michael Jackson? He would sing and crowds would sway to his music. But his own heart was not swaying. Was not enjoying. And then he would go back to drugs. Those, that is suicide. You know, people may say, oh, they died because of this and that. No, it's suicide. If you have to live on drugs, I don't live on drugs to sleep. I thank God I go to bed and I sleep. Don't ask my wife if I snore. But even if I was snoring, that is also okay. It just shows that I am really finished. <laughs> and so we do find that because people are burdened in their hearts, a 20-year-old start looking like a 40-year-old or even a 50-year-old. You know, there are people who grow old faster than their age. Isn't it so, Bishop? Some people grow old. Because the burdens in their hearts start drawing lines on your face. Even if you're hiding them. You may hide them in alcohol. You may hide them into sex. You may hide them in drugs. You may hide them into whatever. But eventually the burdens will draw lines on your face. So you find that someone so young now has a face that looks older than mine. And I'm in my upper 60s. Someone who is young cannot look up. The eyes are always looking down because they feel way down. Someone who is young is always supporting the head because it feels like it's falling off. Because of the weight. I'm not saying that whenever you put your hand under your head, that's the problem. But I'm just saying to you that it weighs you down. And you start stooping ahead of your age. The burdens in your heart draw lines on your face and you find this and you find that. The mouth itself, you know, starts looking like... What is your burden? What is it that's weighing you down today? You know, it's very interesting because there are a lot of things that we try to use to find peace, to find rest. Many of them are external. And you think that you are now rested. Governments spend heavily on defense everywhere. Spend heavily. 
Uganda in the year 2020 spent 948 million dollars. Million dollars. That's like 3.4 trillion on defense alone. Trying to make you feel at peace. Trying to make you rest. <laughs> but are you at rest? No. You're not at rest. And you know the terrible thing with these things. <laughs> After they have done all that. People who have no. The reason why they spend so much on defense. Is because people have no peace in their hearts. And they spread restlessness wherever they go. That's what Osama bin Laden was doing. That's what Jamil Mukuru was doing. That's what ADF is doing in Congo. They have no peace. They have no rest in their hearts. Those are the worst people to live with. And if you marry one of them, God bless you. You see, where there is no peace in your heart, you become a troublemaker. You become a troublemaker. That's what happens. So what is your burden today as you came to church? But I want to tell you, you may have troubles, you may have needs, you may have whatever you think is your burden. But the root of all burdens, the origin of all burdens is sin. Sin. And it's sin that sends you into sedatives. That's the original cause. And I like Isaiah chapter 48 verse 22. A verse that is repeated in chapter 57 verse 21 of the same book. It simply says, there is no peace, and other translations say there is no rest, says the Lord, for the wicked. That when you have sin burdening down your heart, you can never have rest. Because weighing down in your heart. Did you come in like that today? You know, a few years ago, Before I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, I was a religious person. And I ran my life the best way that I thought I could. And I thought that all was well. I did not feel any sense that I had a burden in my heart. And you may be like that. So I may talk as I'm talking and you just feel, no, everything is calm. Everything is okay around me, but you don't have Jesus. Then on June the 18th, 1976, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I was a university student studying mathematics. And on June 18th, 1976, after I gave my life to Christ, what I didn't expect happened. What I didn't know existed in my heart took place. Because I remember vividly on the 19th of June, 19th of June, 1976, getting up from my house, it was shining, it was beautiful, and I just, I was just looking around, and I just wanted to smile at the trees, I wanted to smile at the birds, I wanted to smile at the flies, I wanted to smile at everyone, and somehow my heart felt like something had lifted off my heart. Now, friends, that's what I'm talking about. That is Jesus. The one who lifts the burden of our hearts. Jesus. He took away the burden that was on my heart. He broke the chains and did not leave them on my legs. He set me free. And he said, you can't be free from the burdens of your heart. And I want to say to you, you are here. You've never given your life to Jesus. You are here, you gave your life to Christ, but you backslid. You turned back on the Lord. And now you picked up all the burdens. And maybe others, they keep on praying about the burden. They keep on praying and they take it to Jesus. But after at the end of their prayer, 
Then they pick it up and they say, mm, let me walk with my burden. Jesus is saying today, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Because he wants to start a new life for you. And let me tell you, I know of no other remedy, I know of no other medicine for sin except the cross of Jesus Christ. None another. You can't take it to Mulago Hospital, you can't take it to Alan Galpin Health Center. No, you can't take it there. And as we will see, you cannot even take it to class to educate it. If you want your sin to be lifted off your heart, if you want to give over your burdens, then you have got to listen to the voice of Jesus. The only voice that says, come to me. All of you who are weary and heavy laden. Because he promises something. He's the only one who can carry the heavy burden of your heart. He's the only one who at the cross of Calvary bore the sins of the world and they weighed down on him so hard that he had to cry to the Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And you know what? He was doing that because of you. It was not his sin. Peter tells us he himself bore our sins on the tree. He's the one who lifts the burden and takes care of it. And so I want to talk to you about this one who carries the burdens in our hearts. And I want to say three things. The first thing that I want to say to you is that God's love is offering you today, today, another opportunity the opportunity. Now, I don't know what your context is. And I don't need to know, but God knows. And you know it. Some of you have been attending church like I did from nine months before you were born. Because my mother was always in church. I even remember vividly in that old church which was torn down where she used to sit. I remember my father was actually leading the choir. I remember all that. So nine months before I was born, I was in church. And some of you may be like that, that you have been attending church for such a long time, you have been sedated from Jesus. You have been vaccinated. Yeah? Some of you have been hearing the gospel for a very long time. And every time they preach, they invite people to give their life to Christ. You keep, you keep on procrastinating about it. I will do it. Oh, I have had so many people who have told me that. I want to. I will do it. I will think about it. Well, you know, I found out much earlier, even with my own life, that the moment you promise that you will do it, Satan comes in to tell you why you shouldn't do it. He can make you forget it. He can give you reasons. He can give you people who will keep you away from salvation. So I don't know. And what I'm saying to you, no matter how long you've been hearing this gospel of salvation, no matter how long you've been hearing about Jesus who lifts our burdens, today is another opportunity. Listen to what he says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. And he said, what to you, Chorazin, what to you, Bethsaida? For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago. And then he goes on to Capernaum. In verse 23, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to heads. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, my goodness, can you compare anyone with Sodom? You know the story of Sodom, don't you? Sodom and Gomorrah. It's not about the Sodomites that we talk about here so much. 
It's just that they excelled in that particular vice. But you know, Sodom was not given the opportunity to hear the message of repentance. Was not given the opportunity to turn to God that they may be forgiven. They were not given the opportunity. And you know, later on in chapter 12, Jesus again talks also about the city of Nineveh. Where Jonah went and preached and he said, it's worse for you. Because at least Nineveh repented, but for you, you are not repenting. Now listen, friends. When Jesus speaks like that, comparing you who has heard, you have heard the gospel again and again. You come every Sunday. You hear the gospel preached. You go this way. You turn that way. And he gives you another opportunity. He's saying, if you don't repent today, it will be worse for you than for the Sodomites of Sodom and Gomorrah. You want to be compared to Sodom? I don't think any of us wants to be compared to Sodom. But that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying that you are actually behaving worse than Sodom. That every opportunity that I've given you, I've given you, and some of you come from families where your parents were saved or are saved. And you have heard the gospel again and again and again. They call you to pray. They talk about Jesus. They challenge you to give your life to Christ. But you keep on waiting. You have been given so many opportunities and you keep on wasting them. And so Jesus today is saying, I am giving you another opportunity to repent. What will you do with it? Will you throw it away as well? Or will you receive it? Will you give me your burdens? Or you want to keep them? Are you going to make this an unused opportunity again? Or you're going to use it and say, I take the opportunity, I'm giving my life to Christ. Jesus says, come to me, you who are weary and burdened. That's what Jesus is saying. Come to me. He's asking you, what is weighing you down? What is it in your heart? Whether you are aware of it or not, if you're not given your life to Christ, the burden of sin is real in your life. God sees it. He knows it. And he gave his son to die on the cross that will not lie on your heart again. Jesus is asking you, are you tired? Are you weary of carrying this pitiable burden of yours? Do you want a change to your life? Have you seen the other people who are saved all around you, whether it is back in your home or in back in your church or in, at UCU? Have you seen those people whose burdens have taken away? Will you also take the salvation I give? Just give me your burden. That's what Jesus is saying. What will you do with that? You have had several opportunities before. Are you going to throw away this one opportunity also? I mean, essentially, when Jesus compares us to Sodom, those that have heard and heard and heard and have been given the opportunity again and again and again, he's actually saying, is your heart harder than the heart of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah? Is your heart harder? Because the Lord pleaded with them, they refused. But they, they were never given an opportunity. But if they were given an opportunity, they would have done better than you. But for you, you sit here, you listen to the message, you run to another church, you still want to listen to the message. You go from place to place and you keep on hearing. You come back next Sunday without doing anything. Jesus is saying, today I'm giving you another opportunity. Come to me. Second thing that I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, is to understand that salvation is God's 
gift. You can never work for it. I want you to listen to verse 25 here. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the little children. Wow. To little children. Let me warn you about something. You are in university. I also, by God's grace, went to university. But university has never taken care of the burden of sin. I started out my career teaching mathematics in the Department of Mathematics at Makerere University. That's a few years ago. 1978. Yeah, yeah. If you see that I'm not stooping, it's because Jesus took the burden of sin. He did. That's where I started. Right? And I saw these professors staggering on the campus like the most illiterate drunkard. Right? I saw these professors fight, fight like little children. Education never took anybody's burden from the heart. And the reason why they fight, the reason why they drink themselves stupid is very simple because the burden of sin rests on their hearts. It rests on their hearts. And Jesus says, come, come. Let me take care of it. It's not education that will do it. I value education. That's why we have educated our children. All of them are graduates. All of them did splendidly in their education. Two of them came to UCU and they graduated with a first class degrees. One of them actually topped her cohort. Our daughter. She was the best. She got the highest GPA here. But we only thank God she's saved. That's what matters. You need to understand that if you, if you are a sinner, if you've not given your life, your, your, the, your burden of sin to Jesus, you know what education does? It informs and skills your sin. It skills your sin. Do you wonder why in Uganda the people who are actually impoverishing this country are not the illiterate? Right? They are not. This country is extremely rich. But the people who are impoverishing this country are the most educated. When they steal they steal half of what is going to make a road. They steal half of what is going to make a hospital. They just steal and steal and steal. Who is it that budgets for defense to that level? They are the educated. Aren't they? It's not the poor. Yes, it is good to give the poor an opportunity for education. But listen, if your heart is still burdened with sin, education will not change you. I like what President Museveni said one time many years ago. He was talking about the chief accountants in many of these ministries. And instead of calling them chief accountant, he calls them thief accountants. They know what to do. That's why Kazinda is in prison. Isn't it? It's public knowledge. That's why he's in prison. Qualified accountant. May even have the SCCA, CPA, or whatever you want. It does not matter. But education will inform your sin, will skill your sin, and you'll use it to burden others with your troubles. That's what I'm saying. And Jesus says here, he has hidden these things from the wise and learned, from the wise and understanding, from those who are educated, because salvation cannot be received through education. Education is important, but you're putting it higher than what it can do by thinking that by education, somehow, you'll be a better person. You are putting it higher than you should when you think that education will take care of the burden on your heart. Jesus says, no, it will not. 
when they become expert with their burdens on their hearts, many of them become nonsensical. Nonsensical. They become foolish because their hearts are burdened with sin. And Jesus is saying, come. You're studying in this university? Or whatever you may be doing, listen. And you're here and you think that your education somehow is going to take away the burden on your heart? No, it won't. Jesus tells us that salvation is by revelation. Yeah? Listen to verse 27. All things have been handed over to me by my father, and no one knows the son except the father, no one knows the father except the son, and no one to whom the son chooses to reveal him. It's by revelation. And as I preach this morning, I want to say to you, my brother, my sister, you are here, you've not given your life to Christ. You are here, you backslid in your faith, and you are carrying the burden of sin in your heart. Jesus is saying, through that message, may the Holy Spirit draw you to come. Come, you who are weary, you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Because salvation is not by education. Sal salvation is not by information. I'm not preaching to inform you. That's not the purpose. I'm preaching that you may repent. That you may come in faith. And you may turn to Jesus. And you may say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Listen, friends. In 1975 is when I joined the University of Nairobi. 1975. Young man looking at the future, wonderful. And in those days we had no problem with jobs. I was entering to study mathematics. Sent there by the government of Uganda. I did not have to pay any fees. Even my transport was paid. <laughs> I mean, this just feels like Karamoja. <laughs> so I was, everything was paid. But you know what? When I was in secondary school, I picked up a habit of speaking obscenities. Speaking obscenities. And I thought that I was strong enough to give it up. So now I entered university to study mathematics, and I remember two colleagues, all of us had come from King's College Buddha, top school in Uganda, as you know. We now were in university. And we would walk together going for dinner. We would walk together going to the halls and so on. But we were speaking of sinities. We would walk in the streets of Nairobi and we were speaking of sinities. But you know what? One time we agreed because we knew we didn't like it. We were church people. And we said we are going to stop now using of sinities. This is how people play with the sin. They make resolutions. And maybe you're one of those who is making a resolution about sin. I welcome you to the battle of with sin. And so we made a resolution. And I struggled very much to speak decently thereafter. But within 24 hours when we met again for dinner, I just found myself speaking of sins, and so did they. We just couldn't stop. Sin had taken over. And we found ourselves speaking of sin. Listen, we were intelligent people. Anybody who goes to King's College, Budo is. And from Budo, we had gone to university. Anyone who goes to university is intelligent. Isn't it? But one thing, yes. We just couldn't stop speaking obscenities. Of course, that's on top of many others. But all I'm saying is that sin, when it is in the heart, causes you to do things you wouldn't want to do. And so there we are. When I entered university to study mathematics, obscene language also entered university to study mathematics. Think of that. And so, 
after we had failed, thankfully, on June the 18th, 1976, someone shared with me about Jesus, and I gave my life to Christ. It even took me like two days later for me to realize that the language had disappeared. The language I had failed to defeat on my own had been defeated by Jesus. Why? Because when he says, come, come, you who are weary and burdened, he's saying, I'm going to take the burden of sin from you and you will be set free. How is it that God takes someone who used to speak like that and makes you a preacher? Of the gospel. How? How? That's the miracle. Let me go to my third point and then I'll shut up. The last point is on the last verses, verse 28 to 30. Listen to what he says. Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. This is Jesus speaking to you. I, don't, I want you, as we read this, Please do not think that's just a matter of reading what is in the scripture. I want you to take it personally. And just hear Jesus as he's inviting you. And he's saying, come to me, all you who labor. Are you laboring? Are you heavy laden? Are you burdened? Come to me. And he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you'll find rest. He gives rest. Jesus gives rest. You see, friends, at the time when Jesus was saying this, there were the Pharisees and the scribes who taught people so much religion. They took the law, multiplied it into hundreds of dictates, hundreds of rules and regulations. Jesus even rebuked them that when they, when they multiplied them so much and they themselves would not even lift it Lift a, lift a bit of it with their finger. But they wanted the people to obey those laws. I know of only one man who said that for him, according to the law, he was faultless. And that's Paul in Philippians chapter 3. But they couldn't. And they burdened the people. They put a yoke on the people. A yoke of their teaching. They laid it on the people. And they said, obey that and you'll be acceptable before God. And people tried. And they tried. And they were getting heavier and heavier. And the law was not going anywhere. Neither was the burden on their heart getting any lighter. And then Jesus comes. And he says, but for me, I give rest. Come to me. All you who are weary. And heavy laden. So he invites you. And friend, I want you to look at this as his invitation. As Jesus says to you, come and I'll give you rest. And as I come to, this, to the conclusion of this message, I want you to understand that nobody who ever comes to Jesus goes away the same. That when you come in repentance, when you put your faith in Jesus... He will make the difference. Like I told you from my obscene language, he made me a preacher. And Jesus has never failed me. Not even once. And I just want to keep on walking with him. Because Jesus is indeed the one that lifts our burdens. The question is, will you give him, give him yours? He's saying, come. You who are weary, come. You who are tired. Come, you who have not yet received me. Come, you who does not know that I am here to take care of all your needs. Now, when he uses the word yoke, he's not saying that all of a sudden all the problems will disappear. But he's saying, I will be there with you. So I don't want to preach the gospel, the prosperity gospel, who keep on taking your money. You know, you people are very, you are really gullible. Huh? You spend all your time doing that. And please, he's not asking us, like the Pharisees and the scribes, to have a lot of rules to follow. You know, some of us look at church as if, you know, if I get baptized, if I get confirmed, if I attend church, if I give my tithe, if I am, uh, uh, the chaplain knows me. Look, friends, 
the chaplain will be in his own business getting with Jesus. Not yours. You have got to make a decision for yourself. And all I'm asking you to do is to say yes to Jesus. And this is what I'm going to do. Very simply. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray a prayer. If you're willing, and you know, I never say if you want. I say if you're willing, you're willing. And you're saying I'm willing to give my life to Jesus. I'm willing to give him the burden that is on me. I'm willing to give him my sins. If you are in that category, I'm going to ask you to repeat the first prayer that I shall pray. I'll pray that prayer slowly and you repeat it after me. And that is to express your faith in repentance to God and to say to him, yes, I'm giving you what has been burdening me. Let us pray. So if you're willing to give your life to Jesus, please pray this prayer, repeating it after me. You don't need to say it loudly, but it's okay if you want to say it loudly, you're praying to God. Pray then like this, if you're willing to give him your burden. Dear Father, I thank you for speaking to my heart. I thank you for sharing with me that you take our burdens. I thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. And that he invites me to you. I bring the burden of my sin the burdens of my troubles and needs and I place them in your hands, dear Father. I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart. Lord, make me your child. Forgive me my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me boldness to confess you before the congregation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I want to thank you so much for this time and for the word that you've spoken. Lord, may you Expunge those things that are mine from the hearts of your people and let them know the word that you have spoken and respond to it. And so we ask that even now, as we look at those people who may have prayed this prayer and have invited Jesus into their hearts, Lord, make it possible for them to stand and be counted. For you said that if we believe in our hearts and confess Jesus, the Lord, will be saved. May you make that reality in their lives true. We thank you and may your blessing be with each one of us in the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to do one little thing. If you have prayed that prayer, first of all, I want to thank God for you. Because in heaven, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 15, that there is great joy over one sinner, not two, one sinner who repents. But I also want to remind you what St. Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that you do two things to be saved. You believe in your heart. Now when you believe in your heart, we can't see it as human beings. Only God does. So the angels are already celebrating over you.
because they've seen it. But he also says, you must also confess with your lips. And that's public. You've got to make it public that we may know that you have indeed prayed that prayer, you've given your life to Jesus. And so what I'm going to do now is to lead you in that second part that you may make it clear to all of us that you've given your life to Christ. I tell you, friends, it's not an empty thing. I know what it did to me when I said publicly, I am saved. So I'm going to ask you, if you know that you have prayed that prayer, just put up your hand. Show us by your hand that yes, today, yes, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You say yes, today I've given my life to Christ. Yeah, can I ask those of you who are putting up your hands, please stand up. Please stand up quickly and I'm going to ask you to come here. The chaplain is going to be welcoming you here. Just come very quickly. You know that you've given your life to Jesus. Please do come. Because God is here. God is here to welcome you. Jesus just wants to take your burden. Jesus wants to lift it. You know, come. And when you hear the clapping that's happening, it is a very, very small part of what is happening in heaven. So please do come. Do come very quickly. Jesus said only one and heaven celebrates. Only one. Now, instead of looking at the numbers, I want each one of you just look at yourself and you say, I have made heaven celebrate. That's a beautiful thing. I've made heaven celebrate. And so, friends, I think for me, the Lord has said what he wanted to say. It's always better to shut up after you have preached. Let me pass the microphone over to the chaplain. Beloved, in God, I want to invite you to join heaven to celebrate. Let us give God a mighty hand clap. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tukute tende reza yesu. Yesu oli mwana kwandika. O musai goguna ziza. Nebaza o muloko zi. Nebaza nyo. Nebaza. Wave those hands to the Lord in celebration. E ampo nyawa chisa chisa chinji yeswa kuma ansa nyusiza era buli joyo ye baziwe yesu tukute tende reza yesu holy mwana gwandika mulunji o musa kuna Friends, you're very welcome. Very, very welcome. That big hand clap you're hearing is because people are rejoicing with you for making this step, making this decision, and walking forward to confess Christ publicly. Blessed be his holy name. We're going to close the service shortly. But I have uh, my sister Innocent. I will invite Reverend Henry to join us. At the end of the service, we are going to talk to you very briefly. And this is important. To help you know how you will walk from today onwards. And some programs which will be helpful for your own growth. Reverend Henry, please do come up now. And then we will lead these people into their new journey. Let us pray one more time. Again, Heavenly Father, we come as a church family of Thornycroft Chapel, Shagwe, you see you, to celebrate your work among us. Thank you for these precious brothers and sisters you have added to your own number. Help us together as we walk following you to help them follow you. This we pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. So please follow Reverend Henry and uh, Innocent. Follow Reverend Henry and Innocent, and they're going to give you a card. If you don't have a card, Shadrach has brought more cards. You will get a card, and then you'll fill that card. Kindly follow. Follow these two wonderful people. If you'll walk and follow them, that will be fantastic. Let us give them another hand clap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please do stand and we receive God's benediction. Canon John, would you be kind to give us the benediction? Yes. <laughs> Canon John, please. <laughs> There are, two, there are many Johns here. Well, I have a suspicion there will be many Johns in heaven. So if you are out there and you are a John, okay, if you are a John and you have not given your life to Christ, the name John means God's gracious gift. God's gracious gift. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much. Uh, for this morning time and thank you for the celebration that we have seen with our eyes but which you know in heaven and you knew even before we saw it and so we praise you for each and every individual that has come to you this morning and we ask that your Holy Spirit will hold them dear will hold them tight will keep them close to their Savior. That they will not fall away, but they will hold on. And so help us also to be the kind of encouragement that they need. That by both our testimony and our words, we may raise them and nurture them to be stronger in their faith. And Father, I want to thank you for these, my brothers and sisters. Each one of us as we've been in this church. May we go away knowing we've been in the presence of God. And may we never leave your presence. But let your Holy Spirit continue speaking to each one of us, whispering that all our burdens must be handed over to you, Lord. We thank you for this week. And our plea and cry, Lord, is that as the word goes out, through one-to-one -one witnessing, through the preaching of the word, through all the various activities that have been planned, we ask, dear Father, that many, many people will turn to you, that Uganda Christian University will be a place where Jesus is truly exalted. And now may the peace of God, which is greater than we can understand, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, may that blessing rest upon you, my brothers and sisters. May that blessing go with us now and forevermore. Amen. Please remain standing before we close the service. A reminder from the announcements, tomorrow we have a, a session at 5.30. After we have reached you in your lecture rooms, one-to-one, -one, 5.30 we shall be here, and we'll be dealing with the issue of addiction. Jesus, the one who deals with the burden of addiction. That's what we shall be dealing with. You know someone addicted to anything? Bring them to the meeting tomorrow. God will minister grace to them. We will sing as we recess that wonderful hymn. At thou weary and heavy laden, We'll sing together in response to God's word.
Jesus, Jesus.